Fred, fine-tuning is to me a probe of existence of what the universe is and potentially what it's all about. Um, one test of fine-tuning is um, making alternatives. What, what can you make? And let's start with the whole universe, which you have talked about. What would it take to make other kinds of universes habitable? Well, the key question is what range of parameters would let other universes be habitable? So let me slightly rearrange your question. And the, what we'd like to know is, you know, what the whole suite of different constants or cosmological parameters are that would allow for habitability. And the honest answer is we're still working it out. And the more we look, the more possibilities there seem to be. But we can talk about some of the basic parameters. The first one is... Um, the, the set of parameters that determine the content of the universe. As um, many people know already, the universe contains matter and a weird kind of energy called dark energy. And the matter consists of regular matter, the baryons, the protons and neutrons that make up you and me, as well as dark matter, which we're still trying to figure out. Right. So you can imagine other universes with different mixes of those ingredients. And the key question in fine tuning is, one, what range of ingredients will allow for a habitable universe? And if our universe is fine-tuned, the answer would be you can't go very far from the particular set of ingredients we have in our universe. And are you, when you're talking about the ingredients, you're talking about the proportions between those three categories? You're talking about the structure of each one as well? Yes. Yes to both. Yes to both. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes to well, both. That makes it more complicated. That, oh yeah, and those are just the. That's just the starting gamut. Is yeah. the ingredients. Um, one of the structures that you're talking about is that somehow in the early universe, the universe makes fluctuations in the matter fields, which means there's little bits that are denser and little bits that are less dense. The amplitude of those fluctuations is a key cosmological parameter. Right. Right. And another key cosmological parameter is the amount of baryonic matter or protons and neutrons relative to the number of photons. Okay, I think I understand the reason for the first one in terms of the size of the amplitude, because if it were too, uh, too small the amplitude, maybe then the galaxies wouldn't be able to form and stars wouldn't form. And if they were too big, maybe they would all clump together too quickly. Is that That's correct? exactly right. Okay. The, the question is, how low does it have yeah, to be yeah, yeah. before it and fails, and how big does it have to be before it fails? And, failing and that's what one of the things we'll be fighting about. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so uh, and, and failing means that you don't have a habitable universe because you don't have the right structures. Yeah, well, you, you don't have enough star formation, and stars are uh, okay. critical for life. Right, so. and so this is the core fine-tuning question. How big is that, is, is that range? It's one of the core. Well, one of the core, okay. Yes. okay. Now, the second one, in terms of the ratio between uh, uh, protons and photons, Yes. why is that critical? Well, it's critical for a couple of reasons. In the early universe, our universe produces about, or processes about 25% of the protons into helium during the first three minutes of our history. Uh -huh. If you have that ratio too, too large, you can process all of the protons into helium, thereby leaving no protons left. You need protons for the H in H2O, also known as water. Right. And without water, yeah. we're not the same. Right. So um, you could kill the universe if you're able to make all of the protons synthesized into helium in the um, first three minutes. So, so that would be if there's too many protons relative to, right. to photons. Now it turns out you have to have a really, really different type of universe from ours before you have to worry about that problem. So if the universe um, has a higher ratio of protons to photons, then matter domination starts earlier, which means structures can form earlier. And that can give the universe more um, leeway in forming its structures. You can get away with a lower amplitude so all these. Pr so, so, what, so what the claim is is that our universe is not necessarily the best fine-tuned universe for the for the creation of complexity and structure. That that is that is true. In fact, I would argue that um, if you and I were to sit down at the blackboard, it might take us many years. We could design a better universe. <laughs> and okay. I've been trying to do that, right? And I, I think a better universe would actually be one that has larger. Well, nobody ever accused you of modesty. No, no, no one's ever accused me of that. But. Um, a better universe would be one that has larger fluctuations. And the reason is that structures could, this amplitude of fluctuations we were talking about a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. So a better universe would have larger fluctuations. And the reason is that that would make structure formation easier, more robust, and the theories that we have, which are premature but still under, under construction, 
are easier to understand if that fluctuation level is larger, not smaller. Mm. In other words, the theories have trouble making such a small fluctuation level. The larger it is, the easier it is to make a theory that does it. And we're talking about a theory that does it, and it is the creation of structure. The fluctuations. The, the going from fluctuations to structure. Well, there's two steps. You go from quantum fluctuations in the early universe right. to the fluctuations. Yes. And inflationary theories and their ilk right. will produce those. And they find it easier to make larger fluctuations than smaller fluctuations. Okay. So if the amplitude is larger than in our universe, it's easier oh. for an inflationary theory oh, to work. Make that. Oh, I see. Okay. Then once you have that larger amplitude of fluctuation, it's then easier for the universe to make galaxies sure. and then stars and planets sure. and people. Sure, or, and it happens more quickly. Yeah, it happens more quickly, it happens more robustly. Right. Now, there is a danger of going too far, Obviously. in which case you get the galaxies to be too dense, right. too many things in the middle will collapse to the black holes that form in the middle of the galaxies. Right. And if the stellar environment is too dense, you can kill the universe in two ways. You can have the stellar flybys so frequent that you'll strip planets off stars. Uh -huh. And you will also have the background radiation field so intense that it's too hot. However, there's sort of a sweet spot. If you make the galaxy the right density, then you can make the background um, night sky the same brightness as our day sky. Oh. <laughs> then every planet is habitable. Oh. <laughs> and that's actually a better universe than ours because then all the stars in that sweet spot will have habitable, or I mean, all the planets rather, in that sweet spot will be habitable, but at least they'll have the right temperature. And that's not as constrained as our universe. Is, is there a possible danger that in your constructing a, a universe that would be better than ours, you're actually leaving out some things that you don't know? I mean, that seems like a leading question. In terms of the complexity, uh, are, are you taking into account all the things that are critical? I mean, that, that's the one critique I can think of. Oh, no, it's a very valid critique. And in spite of my seeming arrogance, um, <laughs> we are well aware that we actually do not understand all the things that we need to for life.